CataractCoach.com Resident Crater Chop Technique. This is about case 100, and the resident does a great job learning this crater chop variation of horizontal chop. Now, we sped the video up here. You can tell that there is an attending surgeon who's squirting the eye there and giving some guidance. So, some tri pan blue dye goes in. This part of the surgery, you know, is pretty routine. Get a good stain there of the lens capsule. I do like the positioning of the eye. The iris is parallel to the floor of the room. The draping is good. The lid margin is sequestered. There's a good fill of viscoelastic. Let's watch the main incision. You can always tell a resident surgeon by the main incision. Let's see what we got here. Uh, pretty good, actually. So it looks like a two-plane incision. I like the tunnel length. A little bit of nicking of the limbo vessel, which I like as well. Let's see that rexus. Starting with a cystitome. That looks good. Now, again, we're aiming for about a five to five and a half millimeter rexus. Very nice technique here. Now, this is pretty darn good for case 100. And so there's the Rex being completed. I like how the instrument's pivoting in the incision and not distorting it and no losing the viscoelastic that's in the AC. That's a beautiful looking Rex. It's really nice. Here's a, some sort of specialized, it looks like a chain cannula for the hydro dissection and a couple of different quadrants. Let's see, does it rotate? You know the saying, if it does not spin, you will not win. And that's for a resident. If you're Netta Rossitelli and you've done a million cases, well, it doesn't matter. You do what you want. Here comes the phaco probe. Here comes the crater. So the crater means just digging a central pit into the nucleus. Now, why would you do that? Because you can put the probe then in that pit, and you can do a horizontal chop even without using vacuum to engage the nucleus because you've trapped the nuclear rim there between the phaco probe and the chopper. So there's the central pit. Obviously, don't go too deep here, but that's a nice-looking pit right there centrally. And here comes the chopper. Ball tip chopper for a horizontal chop going around the lens equator. And you can see you don't even need a vacuum to hold the nucleus. You can just uh, position the nuclear piece between the probe and the chopper. So if you don't want to have that time constraint of like, well, I buzz in with a phaco probe, but I only have a second or two before I lose vacuum to get the chop done, try a crater chop. And so this crater chop, we featured on a counter coach before. There are other variations of it as well. And so here... Look at that. The pieces have been chopped. Now each quadrant or each small piece can be emulsified pretty easily. And this is a nice technique, so I encourage you to try this. If you're having trouble with phaco chop because when traditional phaco chop or horizontal chop, you've got a time constraint. You buzz in with the phaco probe, and you've got maybe a second or two to accomplish the chop before the probe loses its holding power on the nucleus. But here with the crater chop, you've dug that central crater all you got to do is put the probe in that crater for some counterforce and then put the chopper around the lens equator and you can achieve that horizontal chop pretty easily. So you can see the nucleus has been removed now. It looks like just a big epinuclear shell. I bet you that can be removed in, uh, in a one swift motion here with the phaco probe. There it is. There's the big epinuclear shell. And you can see it's got some density to it, so you probably don't want to try doing this with the IA probe. The phaco probe is far more efficient here. Very nicely done. A little bit of pieces left here, and those come up nicely as well. Yes, of course, the video sped up. Um, look at those pieces come up pretty nicely. This case is probably more like 20 minutes plus or minus. And that's, a reason, that's very reasonable for about case 100. And listen, even if it takes you 30 minutes, as long as you have a nice, clean, beautiful case, it doesn't really matter. Look at that. Nicely done. Now you can see the incisions. I like the placement of them. That main fake incision is pretty good. The left side of the incision is a little avascular for my liking, but I still am very proud of this resident for case 100. That's fantastic. So cleaning up the cortex here, that's pretty straightforward. And again, that's a nice-looking rexus. The rest of the case is going to be pretty routine. Now, I certainly encourage you, learn how to do CHOP. You're not going to regret it. Even if you've been in practice for 10 or 20 to 30 years, it's really no problem. You can certainly learn CHOP. You can do any of the techniques we've shown you on Cataract Coach. If you're having a hard time with the time constraint, like I said, normal horizontal CHOP is you buzz it with the nucleus with a phaco probe. You then hold the nucleus with a high vacuum. Then you get the chopper and you chop it, and you have to do all that within a second or two or three. If you have trouble with that, try this crater chop. By making that central crater, you just put the phaco probe in that crater for counter traction. You don't need to have any phaco holding power. You don't even need to use your foot on the pedal other than to just infuse the eye in position one with irrigation. And you also don't have that time constraint. You can take your time, place the chopper around the lens equator, and get that beautiful horizontal chop. 
And at the end of the case here, nice looking incision there, nice looking Rexus. That's a beautiful signature. Wow, for case 100, young Jedi, I am very proud of you. And I'm sure your attending is too. So keep up with the good work. And yes, you should learn to do fake or chop. And if you have trouble, I told you, try the creator chop.